Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I am just getting going with the lime spreading again. There we go, it's going again. And we're going to finish off this field, ploughing is well underway. And then as soon as we've done that, we can get the cultivator onto this bad boy right here. We've got 11 litres of lime left. That's fine. We will use those 11 litres of lime to mark out where we're going to be going next. Because we do need that. There. There's our straight line. And then he'll go there and he go... And that's it. That's it. Right there. And and, and yeah, that, that was the technical term for what he did. Uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the flirt sort of thing. That, that, that was the technical term. Bring you back round here like this. And you will open up like that, and then we can reload. Okay, so yeah, we've only got 2,000 litres per pallet. Colour me surprised. I spent the whole of the last episode thinking that we had um, 4,000 litres per pallet. Well, not the whole of the last episode, but uh, a good chunk of it. It did come as a bit of a surprise to me, which uh, I don't really know why, because I have done this many times before, so I should be familiar with it. And I, I can't think why I suddenly thought that it was 4,000 per pallet. No clue. But anyway, I did, and, and that's done. So, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll say no more. We will carry on doing what we're doing right here, which is getting all of this spread out onto the fields. The plowing, he's doing a really good job with that. I'm very impressed with him. Look at him. Racing up and down across the field. He's pulling out into the long runs now. We're going to need... See, this is the thing. I'm wondering how much fertilizer we're actually going to want to put on. So we're... lime is being taken care of and that is being taken care of as well. So there, we're, we're dealing with lime needs right now. And plowing needs are being taken care of. And then we're going to want two lots of fertilizer to go on. And we're going to want some weed killer as well. The weed killer, the herbicide, will put... I'm not quite sure when exactly we're going to put that on. I would say we will try for... Um, she will, we'll try and get that on fairly quickly. We'll do that fairly early on. We'll do that more as a preventative treatment rather than a cure or anything like that. Uh, well, obviously, we need to get the planting done first, and then we could just go straight over after that and do it, because we'll use the GPS system, and that can be the bit that deals with it all. There we go. So there's one pallet done right there. And then when I come back and get the next bit, that should be another pallet used up, and then we've got one more pallet, which should be two more loads. That's probably going to be enough, so two pallets definitely wasn't enough. I did say I was going to get four pallets. I ended up accidentally buying five pallets. I think five is going to be too many. I don't think we're going to use all five, but I, we may get into... Well, we might get into a fourth one. I'm not really sure. Let's see, let's see how this goes, because it's one load, basically one length of the field and then a little bit. But then we've got a long one, but we've, I think we've only got two more passes to do, and then that'll be it. Just two right there. So if he goes racing up across, he's got half a load left. Right there. It's the end of the row right here where they, the hired help does use up a little tiny bit more. But it compensates for the fact that if we were doing it ourselves, then our overlap would probably be more um, at times... Like, right there. I'm not sure that I could consistently get a small overlap like that all the way up through. I think that I would end up making mistakes with the overlap. So, I, I sort of, you you end up, like, you, you do lose a little bit on the ends of the rows. But I think, it, overall, the hired help does do a better job. I think that we may end up having to do another pass on the field here, which is going to be a little bit of wasted lime. Because there's going to be quite a substantial overlap on that bit right there. Now, there's hardly anything left on it. So there's going to be a substantial overlap all the way down through. Which means quite a bit wasted. Now we've got the two pallets at the top. I'm going to go and get them at some point. Let's go up through and just put that one going. Uh, 
Well, there's, I've got two ways of doing it. I can go up there with the loader, the front loader, and pick it up like that. Or I can go and get the auto load trailer and run up with it like that. I think we will do it with the auto. I did say I was going to do it with you. I did, I did already say, yes, I'm going to do it with the auto load trailer. So I may as well be a man of my word and go and do that. Let's get you down around here. I'm also going to put in something there. I've got a, I've, I've got an idea of what I want to put there. I think it's going to look all right, actually, for um, just... It'll fit in around the edge of the field right there. That, yeah, we're going to have a narrow strip, aren't we? Yeah. Narrow strip all the way up across means that we've got to take an extra... But... We'll finish this. One more load... One more full load, and then a part load, which is both out of this pallet. So we did it with three pallets. So there's two pallets at the top. They're going to be spare, and then we've got a part pallet down here that's also going to be spare. Bring you back up here like this, and reload. So yeah, we've we've done it with two pallets. To, uh, we, we did it with um, two and a bit pallets. So all, all, well, it'll be almost three. We, we'll be part way through the final load out of the last pallet. And then we got the two full ones up the top. And they will just, well, we'll stick them over in the corner where we had them last time. We'll, we'll leave them there for next time. And then we, we've got material there waiting ready for our next round of lime. That's every third harvest, so we're going to need to do something different. Before we get to our next time that we need lime, I want something different on this farm. I don't want it done like this. Let's go and see how you're doing over here. Not that you need any help, I don't think. We can just leave you going. And even this bit right up here is coming right up to the end of the field without any issues whatsoever. He's, he's doing a great job with it. Absolutely great job with it right there. Now, it's doing seven miles an hour. Does the plow normally do seven miles an hour? There's an easy way to find that out, I think. If we go to plows in here. There, that's the one I'm using. Seven miles an hour in the field. Yes. Right. Well, if he's going to... It's seven miles an hour. He's not got any slowdown or anything like that, so we don't need to worry about it. He can just keep doing what he's doing. The cultivator that we've got is a little bit faster than that. Let's go... Oops. I go to that one there. So we've already started down across the field for the rest of it. I don't know if we're going to be able to actually finish this. I, I, I mean, I can take this, but I don't know if the hired help is going to finish that bit. There's a couple of little spots up by the boulder as well that I won't finish off. I'll bring you down there like that and then press H. And yes, you are. Sometimes it... Well... I don't know if it sometimes does or doesn't do it here in FS19. I, I do remember it struggling with the narrow strips in FS17. It simply just wouldn't recognize them. And you you had to kind of mess around quite a bit. Usually you ended up having to just do it manually because it, it just wouldn't do it. It didn't like the idea of doing a narrow strip up across the field. So that bit seems to have been fixed, which is great news. Now we can bring you around here, and I've got just a couple of little spots that didn't quite get covered. There's one there, then we've got one right there, like that, and another one right there, and then another one over here, like that, and that is all of the lime. Right, I'm all limed out, that's exactly that load, and I'm quite happy to have done that to use it all up so that we don't have any more that we've got to worry about this one can go back down here we will not worry about washing off the fertilizer spreader we will simply bring it over here i will load up that little bit of fertilizer that i've got right there 20 liters and i will go and fully load up the fertilizer spreader so then it's ready for our next load uh, our next load our next job in the field so back you up to there like that. And I'm going to leave it here, actually. Take the cover off a second. Oops. Load it up like that. So we've got the full 1,000 litres. Do that. Drop it down. Then we can go and get this trailer. We'll run up and grab those two pallets that are sat on the road up the top. So that, um, I mean, I don't need to. It'd probably be, actually, it'd probably be a good idea if I just get going with the cultivator. 
that would probably be a better idea. We, we need to... Actually, you know what? It doesn't really matter because we've, we've still got the seed drill to go through yet. And that's going to take a little while as well. So we'll go and get the stuff up the top. If I've got enough money, I could actually... Right, there's you. If i got enough money, I could actually go and... What have I got? Have I got some wool I can sell? Go and buy the new seed drill. I mean, i still got to cultivate before I can actually use the seed drill. And we've got to make sure we've got money for the seed itself. Plus, I want to do a few other bits. So, the only real way I think that we're going to have the money is if I spend out a bit more and... Um, not spend out. Maybe, maybe sell a little bit of timber, something like that. 64,000 and ticking down because of hired help. So, we know all about that. Cedars in here, you are going to cost me 76,000 for that one. Yeah, that would be nice, but this is the one that we're going to need to go for. $76,000. So I need $12,000 on top of what I've got already. And I don't have $12,000. If I look in the garage, uh, possibly we could sell the small tractor now. I don't really want to. That that case there is not ours. So we've only, we, we're have only three tractors, so we, we can't really go selling that one. This one here will get us probably about $13,000 if we sell it at the shop. So that would, you know, we trade in on the new one. That would be all right. That that would be a good step in the right direction. And then, is there, like, well, no, we need to keep the log fork. Uh, plus selling a bit of wool. If we've got 10,000 litres of wool down there. I mean, at the moment, the sheep do need to be cleaned a little bit. We've got 71 sheep. I could actually sell a couple of sheep. Although I didn't want to do that. That's not something that I really want to do at all. Where barley at the moment is 477. Now, I don't know if that's a good price or not. I don't know what difficult um, mode prices are. Wool is down, but it's rising at the moment. So we don't want to buy it yet, but we could maybe uh, buy it. Uh, we don't want to sell it just yet, but we could maybe sell some wool in the morning because it does seem to be rising quite rapidly. That one needs to go back to the shop, and that one needs to go back to the shop. Because that would be an extra $10,000 if we were to sell the wool, or sell a pallet. Because I think there's one full pallet there. So $10,000 for selling that. How much is the fertilizer and the seed going to cost to do this field? If we can get the fertilizer and the seed then we don't really need to worry about the rest. I've also got to get some fertilizer on this grass field. I mean, yes, I've only got to get one coat, but it's it's still fertilizing that I've got to do. I might actually go and do that now. Although if I'm going to buy the seed drill, getting on with the cultivator would be a good idea. No, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the grass I'm gonna get fertilizer on this field because if I don't, we're gonna end up with the grass being too long. The fertilizer's not going to be able to take any effect. It's already getting pretty long here, so we will do that. That'll be our next job. As soon as I've picked up these two pallets at the top, we will come back, get the fertilizer spinner on, spread fertilizer on this field. Then we will start worrying about the cultivator and stuff like that. Because if I can get the cultivator moving, then once the plowing is finished... I can then deal with getting the new seed drill because the, yeah, we, we're, we're definitely going to do it. We're, we're going to get the seed drill. That, that one, I, I think we need to get that one. Uh, but we do need to cultivate. We are actually going to need to cultivate. Right, we'll change that over 1.3 mission pallets, egg boxes, cotton modules, pallets. Like that, auto load, and then I can switch the auto load off. And do we, are we able to... Strap pallets on. Yes, we are. Pallets can be strapped. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go down over the hill, down over here. Just because I can. There's a load of tree stumps up here that we haven't taken out yet. We ought to come up and do that. Like, there's a, there's a lot of tree stumps up here. I thought I'd taken some of these out. Well, there's another job that we've got. We need to remove some of these tree stumps. That's definitely another one that we've got to put on our to-do list. Now, where am I going to put these? 
I think what I can do is I can actually fit up this way, right beside that thing of herbicide there. I want to come up like that, and then swing in through here like this, there, and I bring it back like that. I just go along a little bit further to there, and then do that, and then load it like that, stop loading, and then unload there like that so there's my two pallets in behind like that what is the price of wool right now it is up to 909 so wool is actually rising quite quickly the price is going up very very nicely so that bit is quite a positive i think i'll just pop the front loader on before i get going with this cultivating i do need to get a move on with the cultivating but before i do that i'll pop the front loader on and just clean the sheep up and we'll deal with the wool a bit later as it's, as it's going up quite rapidly at the moment, we can leave it going up quite rapidly. So I'll put you into there. And then I can come over here and get that one on. He's got pallet forks on at the moment. Bring you over to there. Unhitch the pallet forks. Go and get the muck fork over here that we use. Like that. There we go. Right. I clean those sheep up. And then I've got one full pallet there. I don't know if we've got another full. If I've got another full pallet, then we should easily be, like, between them. And this is something that I did mention before, is whether I should be, like, jumping them all in between them. i got 6,000 litres in that one. That's 400. That's 1,000. 7,400 or 7,500. It's, uh, it's about 8,000, and then a little tiny bit in there. 1,500 in that one. So it's eight and a half. That's two full pallets, if that's a, that one's full. Right, I've got two full pallets of wool. I've actually got two full pallets of wool. And I did say this before, whether I should be, you know, just leaving it or doing only the, the ones that are completely full or what. And a lot of you said, well, no, of course you would move the bits from one pallet to the other when you're getting ready to sell. That's, that, that, that's just a given. So, yes, we would do that. So, I, it's, it may not work out exactly a full pallet, but that is roughly 20,000 litres of wool right there. And if we can get the price up to 20,000 per thousand litres, at 20,000, if we get a uh, thousand per thousand litres, then we've got $20,000 sat right there, which is going to put our total up to 83,000. And we sell the old drill right there, which is going to be another 30 of that, uh, 13,000, I believe, something like that. Uh, we're pushing our grand total up to about 96. That should cover fertilizer costs and seed costs and the cost of the new drill as well. So all costs would be covered to purchase the new drill. We only need to do this cultivating plowing thing once, so at the moment a new cultivator is not important, right? We do need to use it this time, and yes, it's a bit of a nuisance having to do such a small cultivator. And I forgot that I said I was going to do the fertilizer first, which I do actually need to do. We need to get that fertilizer up there and onto that field up there. So we will go and do this a minute. Probably going to have to come back to get a bit more fertilizer, although we're carrying a 1,000 litres each time now. When uh, we were last doing it, we were only carrying, I think it was 700 litres each time. So we, we've definitely made some improvements, but we still need to do the fertilizer spreading up here. So we'll do that next. The plow is still busy. He's doing fine. And then the cultivator will start as soon as we've done this, and then we'll be able to sort of pick up after that. Right. Let's bring you up in like that. I'm going to do once round myself, and then we can see about using some hired help. Um, we'll get the cultivator going, like I've been saying over and over. And then when the cultivator is going in the fields, the once the plough finishes, we get the seed drill, we start the seed drill, and the cultivator and the seed drill should finish the field at roughly the same sort of time. There's, there's not going to be like a, a massive difference between them for the time that they end up finishing the field, which is going to work out quite nicely. That's, that's something that we do want. 
Right, I, I did that quite well up through there, I think, even if I do say so myself. We should... I mean, I might just manually start down this side in a minute. Let's uh, just stop there. I like that the fertilizer does go a lot further than the lime, because if it was anything like the lime, it would... Well, you wouldn't be using a one-ton fertilizer spreader. You'd be using an awful lot more than that if it was anything like the lime. But fortunately, it's not. Fortunately, the spreader has got uh, just a little... It's, it's got an adjustable plate underneath, so we can just trickle it down nice and slowly without any issues whatsoever. And I go up to there like that. Bring that one back, and then we'll run down this side. I'll do one more pass manually up the other side, and then we'll come over and we'll, we'll start it over on here, I think. Start it over here on a short work, just so that we can watch it, make sure that the hired help doesn't try to do anything too ridiculous. Because we all know that the hired help does tend to try to do some rather daft things. This... I was going to say this would be our last grass harvest up here, but no, not necessarily. We could have a number of grass harvests yet before we actually finish up doing all of the stuff that we need to do up here because of the amount that it's going to cost to go and buy cows. We won't be doing anything up the top until we can buy cows, and I want to buy more sheep first. The big sheep pen, I want to buy that one and then start spreading things out. And a few people did some tests on the different sheep pens to see what the rates of reproduction were, whether anything factored into it other than just the number of sheep that we've got. And there is no difference in it whatsoever. If you have 40 sheep in each pen, they will both reproduce, for example, 8 hours per sheep. It, it, I don't know what the actual number is, but say it's 8 hours per sheep if you've got 40 um in each pen. So that's each pen will say every eight hours we get another sheep. So every eight hours we get two sheep. If you put them all into the same pen, the large or the small, then the reproduction rate goes to um, one sheep every four hours. So you're still getting two sheep every eight hours. So it doesn't matter. So what we can do is we can split half the sheep into the large pen, keep half the sheep in the small pen, and then both pens, the populations of both of them, will start to increase. Um, however, that, like, just to start with, does sound pretty good. But if we've got 80 sheep, then you've got an increased reproduction rate. If you've got 150 sheep, those are going to reproduce quite a bit faster than... Um, yeah, I want to do that. Uh, 150 sheep are going to reproduce quite a bit faster than uh, 40 sheep, aren't they? Um, although that being said, because it's... Like, the, the way that it stacks up, so you've got 20 sheep in one pen and 60 sheep in the other pen, you still end up with two sheep every eight hours, as far as I know. If you've got, well, on 80 sheep. So if you've got 120 sheep, if we put 40 into the small pen and 80 into the big pen, you're not going to get new sheep any faster than if you go and do it... Uh, the other way, if, if you were to go and take uh, all of the sheep into the large pen. It's, you're not going to get an increased rate. That's what I'm getting at. It, it doesn't speed it up any further than that. Right? You, you've just got whatever the set rate is per sheep, and then it just increases. So it, it's not kind of, it's not on a sliding, it's not on a scale. If we put all the sheep in together, we're not going to get more sheep faster than if we split them up slightly. And this was always something that slightly concerned me earlier on, was what, you know, where are we going to need to put the sheep? Are we going to have to be, like, doing a, a, a pen dance? So are we going to have to, like, juggle them from one pen to the other constantly in order to be able to get the maximum number of sheep coming off of them? Is it, like, to, in order to keep the reproduction rate at absolutely spot-on perfect? But no, we don't need to do anything like that. We don't need to worry about any of it whatsoever. It will all just work perfectly. Okay, let's just go over and have a look what's going on over here. It's turning over to that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you around this way. And I'm going to see what you're going to do on this little bit right here. So I'll bring you there. I know I'm plowing up our yard by doing that. I'm going to take it to there, press H, and then... Is it going to go past our stone, or is it just going to stop and say, job done, can't cope with this any longer? 
It is just going to say, job done. Can't cope this any longer. Although he's come up to that point. He's going forward. Going forward. And then I press H again. And he just tickles onto the stone like that. And then he'll go on past. And I'm just going to stop it a second. And I'm going to do a couple passes here in front of this stone. Just so that it will move up and down here. And then uh, the hired help can carry on and just finish this bit off. We will then have the fertilizer. That will be finished. And I can go and get the cultivator finally and get that one going. And then it'll be time to start spreading the seed on the field. Which will be absolutely great. That's something that I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to actually do this all the way up here like this. And put that one in there, like that. And bring that over. I do have plans for things to do around the edge of the field. I did mention this before. However, I'm not going to do that yet, just in case what I'm planning does actually flatten or alter the terrain in any way, shape or form. Which I really don't want, because that is going to mess up our little experiment to see just how much extra we're going to get. Somebody did put a... Um, an educated guess as to exactly how much we're going to get in the comment section last week of uh, what our new yield is going to be. And I believe that they said about 85,000 litres. I'll have to go and look it up. I, I will have to go back and look at the comment just to, to find out um, exactly what they said. But I think that was roughly what the guess was. Something like 80 odd thousand litres. And because we had 50 some odd thousand for our first run. And I mean, if that, that's like a 30% increase, isn't it? No. That's, that's a 50% increase. That is an act, that's 50% increase that would be. Like, we got 53,000 or 50 some odd thousand. We're going up to 80 some odd thousand. Um, you know, with an extra 30 grand, 30,000 litres. I mean, if you round down and so on, you, you, that would be roughly a 30%, a 50% increase on the original crop, which is a huge amount. That is a substantial quantity of additional grain for getting the ploughing and the lime and the herbicide onto the fields. That does, that is a significant difference. So I'm I'm curious to see if it does if it is actually that I, I mean it might I might have um, I might be remembering this wrong I get so many facts and figures chucked at me that is very very easy to get confused between which ones is which it might have been seventy something thousand I honestly I don't remember at this point I mean I still think it's going to be good uh, any kind of increase in yield where we're looking at um, well, I, I would say anything 65,000 plus. That's quite a large amount of extra grain that we'd be getting for doing these jobs. And 1,000 litres of grain. I mean, at the moment, it's 500 per 1,000 litres. Now, if we've got 55,000 litres in storage, then we're looking at well over 20 grand for that. Helper F has completed their job. We will go and have a look at that in just a second. I do one more pass here. I don't, probably don't need this last pass. I don't know if I even needed the one prior to this, but we, we've got a nice section of it opened up here, and then the plough can work away on the rest of the field. Shouldn't take too long. Although, see, I keep saying it shouldn't take too long. This is like the bulk of the field up on this bit, isn't it? That's, that's the smaller part of the field that we've done. I mean, it, it looks good that that bit's all done, but... I think really that is the that is the smaller part of the field. We've still got the bulk of it to go up here. Let's drop you into there, like that. Where you go, you can do that. Okay, that one's away, and we're on nine nine one, and wool is still going up in price. That is absolutely brilliant. Four seven seven. We had fifty eight thousand liters. I mean, even if we sell now, well, we want it to go up a little bit from that. Um, but still, that's that's pretty good. Four set. That one there is five five three. You know, I think barley and wheat do tend to be roughly the same kind of prices. So we know it's it could go up probably another hundred per thousand on that. Which again, that's that's x. That's another uh, nearly six thousand um, dollars. Overall, we're doing pretty good with that. I'd say you know, some good money coming up. This nine nine wool is going to achieve a very good price by the look of things. Wool is set to achieve a very good price 
995 already. Okay, we know that we don't need lime on there. That's now fully fertilized. We don't need lime anywhere on the field. The, the grass bit doesn't count. Lime doesn't matter on grass at all. Not in any way, shape, or form. So you can go back to the yard and you can get the cultivator on and start cultivating. Unless I fast forward time a little bit so that I can get... You know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it on the five times speed that we're working on. I'll bring the fertilizer spreader back and this one can be put back into... Actually, I want to put that one into the... No, I don't need to put it into the shed yet because we've still got three rounds of fertilizer to go and put on that field. What we will do is we will put one round of fertilizer. After we've done the cultivating, we will then put a round of fertilizer onto the field. We won't do it before then. So we will open sesame. We will load sesame. Close sesame and lower sesame and then unhitch sesame. Like that. There we go. So there's $1,300, $1,400 in fertilizer has gone in there. See, this is what i got to be careful of, is that I don't go and spend all of my money getting this new seed drill and then not have the money to do anything else. Right, that's, that's a, a very valid concern, I feel. Now, I'll bring you over to there like that, and we'll start going along the top. I don't think I'm going to need to do anything more than that. I'm just going to do one pass, just to make sure that it does turn properly on the headland up here. And yes... I know the game mechanic does allow us to not cultivate after we've ploughed. We can just go straight in with any seed drill directly onto ploughed ground. However, in real life, you would not do that. The only time you would take a seed drill directly onto, onto ploughed ground is if you had a power harrow incorporated into the seed drill. A direct drill would not break up ploughed land into a fine enough tilth to be able to... Uh, plant properly so you do need to cultivate first um, at least with the soils and that that I'm used to using that particular plow though is slightly different you know I'm used to using a mold board plow and that's not a mold board plow that we're using over there that is a different type of plow so because the plow is different then technically it might be all right. It might actually be just fine for what is needed, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to cultivate anyway, just to be on the safe side, because the, the better the, the um, seed bed, the, the, the finer the tilth of the seed bed, the better the early germination and um, the better the seeds will do, because you, you have it all fine like this, and then you plant the seeds, and then you roll them in, and that compresses it around it, and it but it allows the roots to get through um, and allows the nutrients and everything to get through to the plants a lot more easily. And if you've got big hard clods and lumps, it can actually kill off the seeds as they're coming up because they can't push through it and they're not strong enough to get around it before they get to any light and then issues can happen. So you end up with weaker plants and it's patchy and, and just generally not as good. You don't want that. That's, that's not a thing that you're looking for. Okay. Let's go back into here. We're at 1,000... I'm on five times speed at the moment, and the rate of increase of the wool right now is quite insane. That is going... That is really climbing well, isn't it? That is really, really climbing well. We are making a lot of money out of that. Silage at the moment is way down. It's more than 100... $100 per thousand litres down on what it was previously. Uh, straw is 73. We sold it in the mid-60s for straw. So that's a little bit higher than it was. Not that it really matters at the moment. This is the one that we're watching. We're going to... We, well, we'll have to deal with that in our next episode. We, we've run out of time for today. So that'll be next week. We will sell some wool. We will buy a brand new seed drill. And then we'll be able to start drilling this one with the second round of barley. We've got two lots of fertilizer to put on here. And we've also got some herbicide to put on here as well. And then we will get going with our next harvest. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.